Hello everybody, welcome to this week's plumberparts.co.uk video, a new type of video, a new segment that I hope you guys are going to get involved with. I'm going to answer some of your comments, but before we do that, I need to clean this whiteboard down. Please subscribe. <laughs> So while I'm rubbing this lot off guys, just make sure that you do click that subscribe button, that you click the bell to get a notification as to when we upload a new video. Oh yeah, that's really important guys. So you know what, we're gonna bring your comment on screen, we're gonna scroll down and find it, screenshot it, talk about it, and then hopefully I can describe an answer for you. So guys, as you may be aware, a few weeks ago I made a video about one of the worst heat systems I've ever looked at. All the way along here, and then they drop down into the airing cupboard, just about here. So what I'm trying to say to you is there are times when you do a job, you have to try and do what's best and try to deal with what happened on a system in the past. I can guarantee you with any luck that Zoe here is going to be really, really pleased with this job when you're done, aren't you Zoe? Oh yes. <laughs> so there you go, it was an absolute terror beast, horrible system um, that we actually got working in the end, but we required on this system to have a thing called relays. Now, a few of you actually commented how much you liked this vloggy style plumbing video that I'd done. Thanks very much for those lovely comments there, guys. Um, also, if you want to follow my other vlog where I don't do plumbing stuff, but I do things like learning to fly. and building wood burners out of old gas bottles. I'm just an idiot, basically, and I couldn't be bothered to walk all the way down to the garden. Anyway, let's leave me building that. We'll come back later on in the video so you guys can see how this beast turned out. Then check out my other vlog channel, At Times With James. I'll leave links below. Also, guys, you know the rules. All the tools that I use in this video is in my Amazon store. Link below, all right? Synchronos asked the question that I thought was the most important and the one that I want to address in today's question and answers video. Right then, so we're in the video now. Let's have a quick look and see what was going on. Helped out Shamoy there. Very pleased to help you out, Shamoy, my little darling. Vomit Man said, good video. Thanks, mate. Oh, dearie me. What's that all about? Uh, also, the lovely guys, actually, if you just look in the corner there, Skill Builder. Recommended in the corner. Absolutely lovely old boy skill builder. I made a video with them in the past that we actually haven't put out yet, but we will be doing soon. Uh, and there he is. He's commented just there. I don't know if that's Roger, Rob, or Dylan, some of the gang. Um, but I love you very much, guys. I really do. Uh, some of the comments did make me laugh. Some guy going on about my beard. Your dad is such a legend. Thanks. What did I say back? Haha, I won't tell him that. Oh, bang a little like on my own comment. But there was one question that I really, really want to have a look at. Let's see where we can find it. Great video as always. Can you shed any more light on the relayed pump? Why and how? Thank you. So there's that one there from Brendan Allsop. And I might have replied to Brendan saying, look, I'm going to do that in the next video. There we go. A little light there. Fiber washer. Always trying to go on about the misses. Um, and there was one as well. There was one other guy. Richard Lyons. He's, he's uh, followed us for ages. Uh, great video, mate. Not sure why the original plumber didn't do that in the first place. Gold standard work as always are. Cheers, bro. Thanks very much. And I just said to him about doing my PPL at the end of that as well. Dude, get a stabilizer on that camera. I tell you what, Mike, get a stabilizer on your mum. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like... <laughs> Nauseous watching this, all the walking. Sorry, Marie, next time I'll describe this job through the medium of mime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I can't help myself. I honestly can't. I just, uh... Right, so I found it. Synchronos, one of the best I've seen would like more info on the relays i take it you can just patch in on the existing pump power feed and or install a pressure activated switch so let's get on with synchronous's question why do we have electrical relays on heating systems so we usually have a boiler we usually then have a pump and let's just say for instance we're going to have an s plan system today so we have a motorized valve there and a motorized valve here and then one of them goes to the radiators and back to the boiler and then one of them goes to a coil in a hot water tank and then back to the boiler what do we need to happen electronically for this system to become live and to work properly well the first thing we have is a thing called a programmer or a timer 
All that does is switch on or off one or two or three or five electrical signals in 240 volt usually to different components according to time. That's all it does. So when it gets to half six in the morning or seven in the morning and you want your heating on, the programmer, if it's programmed or timed correctly, will start and initiate an electrical supply. So the first thing we need to do is have that electrical supply. So let's look at the heating system, for instance. After that, it's gonna to want to go through a room thermostat. Room thermostat is just a switch that switches on and off according to room temperature. And after that, it's gonna go into our motorized valve. I'm just gonna draw a little bit bigger. We're just gonna draw it like that. And it's effectively gonna go onto the motor to open up that valve. And that is it. That's that live finished. That doesn't go any further. So all this live is doing here is saying, this is the time I want some heat. This is the temperature. Oh, I definitely want some heat. And here's some power to go into our valve to open up the valve to the radiators. Now we need a safe way to tell the boiler and the pump that there's now a need and a demand and it's safe for them to come on and start sending heat around the heating system. The way we do that is we have another supply that comes out of the programmer and it uses a small switch. So looking at this here, this is a three port valve. So we've got our um, flow coming in, then we've got A and B going out and this will divert to either or both at the same time. Um, now when one of these, if you've really got to look in the right place to see where the micro switch is, where is it, little bummer. Can you see that? As you look here, as this opens up, you can see, look, that that is moving onto those two little bits just there, those two little prongs, it's actioning on that, and you can actually hear it opening up and making an electrical connection, a switch to safely tell our pump and our boiler to come on. Now, without going into too much detail about it, because it's not 100% relevant to this video, uh, three port valves have a slightly more complicated switch assembly, but just see it like this, the valve needs to open and it needs to tell the boiler and the pump that it is open, so it's safe for everything to come on. So once that little switch in there is live, it's gonna send a live supply to our boiler and guess what? It's just gonna hop the same supply over to our pump. So that there is how we initiate a live supply in electrics in a schematic way over to our radiators when it wants to come on. So let's have a look and see what happens, right, when we've got the same thing for hot water. So we've got our programmer that, as we said a minute ago, is just a switch that switches uh, electricity on and off according to time, that's all it does. That's gonna go through a cylinder stat, which is exactly the same thing as our room stat down here. And when that fits cylinder stat, which is all it's looking for, is is the hot water hot enough or is it too cold? That's all it's gonna do. And it's gonna turn on and off that supply. It's a switch there. It's gonna go through that and then it's gonna go into another two port valve. This one here. Same thing happens again. We need to be able to tell the boiler and the pump that that valve is open and safely calling. All we need to do is often, we'll actually use the same one there, but We'll draw it out here, goes into there, and when the electrical supply here opens up that valve, those little micro switches go and make. This electrical supply then is made. And we send a supply off to the boiler and we jump it to the pump. That's all we're doing. That's pretty simple. That's, that's the simplest way of describing how these systems work. Uh, now, sometimes you do get problems, don't you? The programmer might not send a live out. This might go out of range. The motor in the motorized valve might go wrong, things like that. And once you sort of get your head around this sort of system, you'll be able to go through the fault finding aspects of that. So let's have a quick look at why we need relays in systems like this to stop certain problems. I'm gonna draw it out in a slightly different way. Take a snapshot of that if you want, if you can remember it, uh, what I was babbling on about, because I do love a babble, you guys know that. It's like being at school, isn't it? It's like being at school again. Oh, I do love a school. So quickly, what is a relay? A relay is a set of two contacts that often, in the same way as what you get on a solenoid valve, move up and down and make contact when an electrical current is applied. So what's handy about that? So usually what you have on a relay, depending, let's just do a really simple relay. You've got a live that comes in, and when that, when that live is initiated and switched on by something, maybe, maybe the time clock, could be that, that will come down and make a contact between maybe some contact wires that we want on the other side. So for instance, perhaps our switched wire. Now the good thing about that is that means that we can isolate one part of the system away from the other part of the system. So what do relays do? Relays interrupt the live supply to a component in the system that you do not want to come on, that you can still control, 
whether it's interrupted or not, using time clocks and thermostats. That is it. That's it, guys. So I know what you're asking, ladies. How did I use relays to solve the problem of fixing that heating system? Well, let's have a little look, shall we? <laughs> so this is what we had. We had a boiler, and the flow from that boiler went all the way, miles away, into an airing cupboard, to a pump, and from there, we had motorized valves for hot water and upstairs and downstairs rads, okay? Coming off the back of that as well, up in the airing cupboard, we had a pipe that came all the way back to a room just next door to the boiler that went to a small pump and an underfloor heating manifold. And this system wasn't working very well because we had a massive problem with the physical properties of flow going around the system. So water was going all the way up there and going all the way back again, and then all the way on the return, and then all the way back like that. If you watch the video, you'll be able to see what it's like. I've left the link to it below. We were having this huge issue that we just weren't getting any flow here. And the obvious solution was because these two were so near to each other, the obvious solution for us was to get rid of this bit like that. We don't want that anymore. Why don't we just tee off the top of the boiler, put a little pump there, and then we can feed into that manifold. And also there were a couple of radiators around there as well that weren't getting hot. So let's use the knowledge that we gained earlier on and draw this whole system that we've got out here in an electrical way. Let's have a look at that. So I'll do it right now. We've effectively got four, four switches coming out of our time clock, all right? So we've got one for hot water, one for rads, another one for rads, and one for uh, underfloor heating. We have a thermostat on the hot water. We know that we've got a thermostat on the radiators. We know we've got a thermostat on the radiators downstairs, and we know we've got a thermostat on the underfloor heating. Okay, so that's our first lives coming out. We also know that every one of these has a motorized valve. And because we saw this earlier on, we also know as well that that's where these lives stop. Bonk, like that. We also know that we've got a switch live that switches when that's opened. The same for this, the same for this, and the same for this. When any of those are opened, they will send a live supply to this pump and to the boiler. They share that live supply, and there's nothing we can do about it, all right, for a minute. Most systems work like this, but we're physically adding this, this, this lot here miles away from all of that. You know. It, we're gonna to have to rip up floorboards and everything if we're gonna get this to work properly. This is when, teachers, I want you to maybe stop this video in a sec and see if your students can figure out what's going on, what's wrong, and why, why we needed to do this. So let's say, right, the hot water is not calling the ra and all the upstairs radiators aren't calling, so we don't have a live there, all right? And because we don't have a live, that valve is shut, hot water's shut. The radiator valve is shut, that's shut and the motorized valve for the other radiators is shut as well, right? But we've now wired this up in a certain way that when our underfloor heating calls, it goes through our stat into our motorized valve. And we all know where our motorized valve is for this because it's just here. Should have put that in. Yeah, massive cock up. Motorized valve is open. What do we want to do when the motorized valve opens? We want to call the boiler on, don't we? And we've got our little jockey pump that we've put in, so we want to call that on as well. So I want to call that, I want to call that and it wants to call the boiler. I rubbed out a line, didn't I, earlier on, that's intrinsically linked the boiler and the main flow pump. So stop the video. Tell me what you think is going to happen when the underfloor heating and the, and the motorized valve and all this lives up. Tell me what you think is going to happen. Pause the video. Also, guys, this kind of installation only really kind of happens after a bad installation. It doesn't tend to happen on new installs. It's more the kind of thing that we have to do to get a system working like we did in that last video. Anyway, I hope you've all figured it out now. Shmeh. Right then, so what's gonna happen? Because we know that the boiler live and that pump up in the airing cupboard live is shared, it's going to send a live to that pump. That pump's gonna cut in, but none of these valves are open. You're gonna get like, uh, just like a pressure behind there. You don't want that. So what we do, we use relays to interrupt that signal back and forth. The same works the other way around. Say one of these came on, it called that live, but the underfloor heating wasn't calling. The live gets sent to the boiler and the pump, but it also gets back to that pump. Uh, everything starts coming on. It's like, well, what's going on? Don't want this at all, you know? So this is when we use relays. I'm just gonna draw it out in a slightly different way. It's a hard one to describe, isn't it? Whew, sometimes surprised my own brain. So this is how we do it. We have two relays. This is gonna be our underfloor heating here. And for instance, we're just gonna split it up from the rest of the system and call this our hot water. 
We already know that our underfloor heating needs a programmer or a time clock, and we also know that that's the same for the hot water as well. We know that there's gonna be a live that goes to a thermostat, and then we know that that live is also gonna to go to our motorized valve to open it. We know exactly the same that this is gonna to go to a tank stat, and that's also then gonna to go to a motorized valve to open it. We also know at the bottom of that, we've got an underfloor heating pump that we wanna kick in, and we've got a hot water pump that's obviously shared by those radiator circuits as well. And at the bottom of all of that, we know that we've got our boiler. So how does this work at the moment? Right, so let's say, for instance, the underfloor heating wants to come on. We've got our live terminal here that we pinch off that like so. So when the programmer calls and the thermostat calls, it sends a live to close the connection, bang, on the relay. And sometimes you'll hear a relay actually clunk, it'll go dunk like that and you'll see it do it. So that'll clunk down, bang, we've now got a live. What are we switching? That's the question. Well, we've got our switch live, haven't we, that comes out of here, that went into there. When the motorized valve is li livened up and actually becomes open and says, yes, I'm open now, I'm ready to go, this live, goes to the boiler, like it did earlier, but rather than going straight back to the pump, it's returned and switched in the relay to our pump. So what hasn't happened here? We've got some fixed things that go on here. We've got our live there that has to get switched on our motorized valve there. That goes to our boiler terminal like it did earlier, because this is all just one live terminal here. It's going back up to here, into our relay. But because the programmer on here and because the thermostat on here haven't called, we've not initiated a live to this. It hasn't closed down, and therefore we haven't sent a live to that pump up in the loft when we didn't want to. And that's what relays do. They separate everything out. They make it so you've got a little bit more control especially in systems where you're not gonna be able to get wires to places and things like that when you're trying to fix things. Hopefully, 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 that has sort of got into your head what's going on. Uh, that sort of improved your knowledge of what they do there a bit. If you can get your head around the fact that all these wires effectively being stuffed into one terminal in the boiler, the live terminal, um, then you'll be fine. Everything else like neutrals and earths, they all just go to their other place, don't they? They, they all go, when you're doing any wiring, neutrals and earths go into the neutral and earth bit. It's the switch lives and the lives that you want to worry about and know what's happening. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. Uh, it's been one of those videos that I actually struggled to make because it is a complicated subject and it's quite difficult to convey over to you lot. But just make sure you go out there, research more, find out for yourselves. This is not the be all and end all and there's a lot more knowledge on this subject to be gained.